and there's glass over everything. There are more than 40 car crimes every hour in the UK. I was prolific. I just could not stop stealing cars. Organised gangs make millions exporting luxury stolen motors. As long as you keep calm and you don't shiver and you don't sweat, money's in the bank, really. Picking something up already. There's high-tech crime using the very latest gadgets. I'm a right smart bastard, me, you know. I can do this. I'll show you, look, I'll show you, look, it's, it's easy. And insurance scams risking lives to rake in the cash. I'm proud of myself, I can do that. I don't care about no one, bro. This is Grand Theft Auto UK. Scooby. Good car for ram raids. For getaways. Good car. Four-wheel drive. Fast. <laughs> wow. Meet Jamie Manderson, one of Britain's most notorious car criminals. Everyone knew who I was, what I was about. I like to think Britain's best car thief. <laughs> Loud and proud. Hey, is that is in there as well, that Freelander? They go for ram raids and all. They go through shutters like knife and a butter. <laughs> I mean, the cops hated me. And they had every right to, you know? Jamie's speciality was nicking. He reckons he'd be in and off in just 30 seconds. Start the clock. Jamie started his prolific career when he was 15. Well, that didn't take long. Now he's 40 and he hasn't done a car for 10 years. Although this time he did ask permission. Come to Biggie. There you go. Do you want to start her up or shall I? Oh, well, there you go anyway. All the battery lights are on. It just ain't starting up. Look. All right. Uh, admittedly, this took me 45 seconds a minute. I've got to say, after 10 years, that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I do miss it, secretly. <laughs> It is, it is, it's the fun of doing this, the art of it. There ain't many car crimes that Jamie didn't do. That's why he's got nearly 200 convictions. And with that many motors, there are standards that need to be maintained. I'm gonna break a window, is that okay? Back in the day, the boys, this is why I was so embarrassed, because boys would come up to these windows and what they'd do is pop, and push it through and then unlock it. I couldn't deal with that, because as soon as the police sees that, you'll bait. And there's glass over everything, and you're going around the corner and it's falling out the car. You're shit if that's the case, mate. Tell you what, wouldn't mind a souvenir. Thank you. Knock <laughs> myself out. <laughs> In the last 10 years, new auto security tech has put the brakes on the likes of Jamie. But despite the best efforts of car makers, more than 200 motors are still nicked in Britain every single day. And today, much of that thieving is down to hundreds of international gangs run by crime bosses like Mr Big who's just rocked up in shorts, flip-flops, and what he says is his latest stolen car. You get an order, a uh, shopping list for what cars are wanted, high-end 4x4s or high-performance cars, even, you know, um, Ferraris and things, Lamborghinis, anything, really. And the profits are huge. You can make an uh, easy quarter of a million pounds, you know. You've got to be satisfied with what you get. If you try and be greedy, then things start going wrong. There's a ready market for stolen luxury British cars in Eastern Europe, and that's where the gang fills its order books. This is a multi-million pound operation, so the organiser won't reveal his identity. That's why we've called him Mr Big. It's very difficult. If it wasn't difficult, obviously, everybody would be doing it. 
So um, I, c I couldn't obviously reveal to you uh, any secrets because otherwise you'd be probably doing it yourselves. <laughs> You've always got to be on your toes, on the lookout, and then things are successful if it's done like a military operation. And like every military operation, this one starts with the foot soldiers. Climb target. Climb target in top, top, top of the range. Top of the range, yeah. People like Martin, who's a car spotter. They'll just give me a list of cars that they're looking for, and I'll go out, try and find those cars, and um, get the, the, the address, the registration, whereabouts it is, and then pass it on to somebody else, and that person will try and go and get that car then. And when you're moving into a new flat on benefits, lining up a car to Nick can really help the budget. I live off £147 every two weeks. If I could steal a car um, and sell it to somebody, I, you know, I'd get, I'd get £2,000, you know what I mean? Just like that, and that's cash in my hand straight away. Once Martin spotted the motor, it's time for Vince, the key man. With modern immobilisers, it's hard to nick a car without the keys. And Vince, who's 50, doesn't care if he burgles homes or goes in through the letterbox, just so long as he gets what he's after. I can see inside the other room, the window, the trees. Uh, uh -huh. And now I can see a cupboard, and on the side of the cupboard, uh, I can see a set of keys. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do the third. And put a rod into the red box and push it as far as I possibly can. If you leave your keys by the front door, this demo shows just how easily they could be gone. And your car, too. We'd actually up the keys and I'll lift and pull the cane back as quickly as possible and actually pull the keys through the door. Now I have the keys to a nice car. Now Vince the key man and Martin the spotter are back on the streets, looking for the next smart motor to deliver to Mr Big. But there are more ways than just theft for crims to profit from car crime. Cash for crash costs insurers 400 million a year, and no driver is safe. I'm proud of myself, I can do that. I don't care about no one, bro. On the roads of Britain, insurance scams are being played out every day of the year like this smash, allegedly staged to fleece the insurers. One is called Cash for Crash, and Happy claims he's a master of a con that costs on his drivers 90 quid a year on their premiums. Look at this spot, it's fucking really nice bro, to do the job. Bang. Illegal immigrant Happy, who's 28, is a driver who puts lives at risk by deliberately causing accidents so fraudsters can make bogus insurance claims. People coming to me because I'm a good, because nobody can do what I can do, because I'm a professional, I'm going to do a bank thing, and I'm not scared for do this thing. Main thing is make sure no any kids in the car or no any like a old, too old person in the car or any disabled or anything. This is a low speed demo of one of Happy's cash for crash techniques. He drives in front of the innocent car he's targeting and slams the brakes on, causing a smash. Then the fraudster who's paid him quickly swaps places with Happy, so it looks like the fraudster was driving. Well, fucking hell, man. Look at this your car, man. Look at the his. What's the no, story, bro? No, fucking hell, man. Look at the it's car, no man. You can't you fucking see that. Look. The, the driver of the car behind, yeah, who's completely innocent and probably in shock, gets the blame. You're going to show us detail here. Yeah. 
Insurers reckon that exaggerated claims can be anything up to 30 grand per accident. The scammers want cash for the likes of fictitious damage, fake injury, and probably a few extra passengers who weren't even there. Cash for Crash rakes in 400 million in bogus claims every year. In this smash, there are two con cars. One does a last minute maneuver, giving the second an excuse to slam on the brakes. This scam involves plenty of dodgy geezers. But everything centers on the smashes caused by cash for crash drivers like Happy. I make it two grand. Two grand, nothing for me to add a day. But it's not just the cash that Happy needs. You can't do it when you're normal. Uh, I'm smoking, one or two split, just cannabis, one or two split, and that's it. Make your mind is like a buzz, so you're not gonna think you pain. You can't feel the pain. Happy has a wife and a kid, but is prepared to risk everything when he's at the wheel. My back gone, my neck gone, my legs gone, everything gone. The worst, the worst crash is when eight car hit us, and that's the worst, worst accident in my life. You don't know how, how fast the car coming is behind you. And if you're, you're bad luck, that guy is drunk or something and he can't control the car, you don't even know you come back home or not. If you're not brave, you can't do it. It's no skill, it's about your heart is brave. That's why I'm doing it and I'm proud of myself I can do that. I don't care about no one, bro. London boy, bravest guy. Jamie Manderson is another car crim with plenty of bottle. His 17-year spree is now over. Yeah. Here, there. Here, there, man. But Jamie and his mate Andrew still enjoy chewing over the good old days. Everyone wanted to be Jamie, obviously because of the attention and the money he was getting, but no one can physically do that. <laughs> not again. <laughs> Definitely not again. I was a show off. Yeah. I was a show off. I mean, that'd be most times we'd be around the park and we'd see a car come down the road barreling and we'd just pull up, and break skids, smoke, Jamie. set up 11s and... That's what I said to a million. And he'd be gone. You could hear me coming, yeah. mate. Then he'd do a siren and you'd just, you'd just see him look out the window, go, go, and he'd be off. <laughs> wow. The next week later, it'd be a different car you'd see him in. And that's how it went on. I, I had my mates. And although they were the wrong kind of mates, they looked up to me and I looked up to them. I'd turn up and he'd be like, yeah, come in, we'll do this, we'll do that. I'd be like, yeah, I'll come in, grab a go and fuck off. <laughs> 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 oh, my God, man. I mean, I was making a grand every other night. At one point, I was doing 14 cars a night. I know I was good, I know I was fast. There weren't no one else like me. Yeah. Mate, I'm a legend, mate. I'm a legend. And there was a car pound, a showroom, which Jamie and his mates hit again and again and again. Even though it was staked out by the cops. I can still see us running about up here. It was crazy. I mean, the police were pissed off. There was one particular guy, <laughs> he's funny. Um, he'd come in, he'd drive in, turn round here, and as he turned round, lights had come on somewhere on a car, and that's how we knew it was on top. As soon as them lights were on, he'd wheel spin off, they'd go chasing after him, we'd walk round the corner and take what we wanted, right under their nose. You know, they thought they'd have us banged to rights, far from it. Mind you, it all comes with a good lawyer. Having a good lawyer helps. <laughs> but we had a lot of cars from here. I'd say I had probably between 20 to 30. I was prolific. I mean, there was no stopping me. I just could not stop stealing cars. How long have you worked here, by chance? 17 years. Really? Can I just say I'm really sorry? I had a few of your cars. Did you? <laughs> I, I'm really sorry. No, I, I'm just trying to go round and put it all right, you know. Wow. <laughs> Shocking. 
Now, Jamie's hung up his screwdriver. But with today's car technology, it wouldn't have got him very far anyway. Now, high-tech motors can only be stolen by high-tech thieves. Like the players involved in an international operation run by Mr Big. Nicking cars worth millions. And this is just the latest. I couldn't say exactly where it's come from, but uh, I would imagine it would have come from somebody's drive or a car park or somewhere. But it's going to end up going to Russia. Obviously, they're getting a good deal because they know what the history of the vehicle is. <laughs> but whether the people who get the car know what it is, we don't. We don't really know that. Can't answer that question. Brand new, this Jag would have cost 30 grand. So the Crims hope to get a good price. You'd be looking at, to get at least £10,000 for it. There's somebody already lined up for the car. Cars are to order. Could be um, numerous, up to 10, on the go at one time. In Mr Big's operation, once the car's been spotted and stolen, a team springs into action, including Terry, the expert techie. It's got to be done fast. It's, it's like choreography and a dance. It's like choreography and a dance. Everybody's got to work right. If not, you'll all end up in a big lump. And job one is disabling the device the police use to find stolen cars. It's called a tracker, and all new luxury cars have at least one. If the vehicle's still in, there's no sign of any police. Normally, it would be unlocked. And I just come in, and you find a convenient 12-volt um, output, used to be called a cigarette lighter. Aha. Uh -huh. And you get the jammer, you put the jammer in there, and it's just like a little charger for your, for your phone with the aerial on it. And you just plug it in there. That car is now jammed, and I'd be away. And then another driver would come along, swap the plates over to clone plates so that it's not going to be picked up on ANPR either. ANPR, automatic number plate recognition, is another way police can locate a stolen car. And now the trackers have been blocked, they need to be removed. And Terry's got a bit of kit for that too. See what we can find. He even knocks it up himself. Now this little fellow in a minute, it beeps. Basically, it detects the small voltages present inside a mobile phone. That's because the trackers use the same mobile phone frequencies and masts as the mobile phones. We larches are a favourite. They try to put them in very awkward places where they wouldn't be very easy to get at. Hang on a minute. You see, there's one under there. Wing mirrors are another place because modern wing mirrors are powered because the tracker does need power. There was one gentleman stole a wing mirror, put it on his car, and the police stopped his car because they thought he'd cloned the, the car. And all he'd done is he'd put the tracker on his car from another car, <laughs> which um, got him done for stealing the wing mirror. <laughs> Definitely one in there. There's one behind there. This is a hire car, so the trackers have to stay where they are. But Terry's already got the buzz he wanted by outsmarting the best the security guys can offer. Can be lucrative, but I do it a lot more now, I think, for the vanity, for the... I'm a right smart bastard, me, you know. I can do this. I'll show you. Look, I'll show you. Look, it's, it's easy. No, all you need to do, I'll tell you, son. It's pure vanity. There's nothing else to it, really. And it's fun. Mr Big's operation is designed to outwit the law enforcement teams who are dedicated to catching them. One is based at the port of Felixstowe, and Detective Constable Nick Shrubshaw is part of the team. 
My task is to, amongst all these containers, is try to identify which ones might have stolen cars in. Um, and with the volume which is going out of the country, about 3.7 million containers a year, it's obviously very difficult to try and find them. The luxury cars that Mr Big's team nicks are sometimes smuggled abroad in containers like these. Morning, gentlemen. Here, a thousand containers a day are shipped. But these have been seized by ACPO's Vehicle Crime Intelligence Service because Intel suggests they might have hot motors hidden inside. Um, we've got a 5 Series BMW in here and an X5 BMW in front. These are actually going to Beirut, to Lebanon. It's quite an unusual destination, from here, certainly from here, for Phoenix, though. The chassis number is there. That can quite often be altered. I'll get the, in, get the identification of this one, and uh, we'll do checks with the Germans. The stolen vehicles can, can come in various disguises, really. Um, obviously, some are hidden, some are, are hanging from the roofs. There's a vehicle there. Uh, with the registration plate, it's quite an elderly vehicle. And then, see up here, we've got another vehicle directly above it. So that's suspended from the roof. Sometimes you get a, just a gut feeling that's not quite right, the container doesn't look right. And uh, that's probably where your, your police thinking kicks in. You can only do a certain amount of work with the intelligence that you've got. So we're only looking at a small percentage of what's actually leaving the port here. Three years back, criminal gangs stole 65,000 UK cars that were never recovered, worth 300 million quid. Here, they're trying to put a small dent in those numbers. These, these vehicles um, are all stolen, and the, the, the value is between 200 and 250,000 pounds. It is a big problem. It's a growing problem, because it's linked to so much of the organised crime. We believe there's hundreds of gangs which are involved, and um, we obviously try to keep up with uh, the next um, method of, uh, of moving the stolen vehicles out of the country. On the streets of Swindon, there's a man whose days at the front line of car crime are all behind him. But Jamie, whose record includes 48 convictions for driving without insurance, likes nothing more than a trip down memory lane. And of course, now he's walking. This is Buckers Field. This is where I was born and bred. I used to live in the White House over there, synonymous with Wiltshire Constabulary. I've parked loads of stolen cars behind them bushes. I can't tell you how many times I've hid in people's back gardens. Uh, Colin? Oh, right there, our kid. Ah, fuck me, that's still there as well. Yep, this is my house. This is where the police used to come and kick the fuck out the front door every opportunity. So many times I've had fights with coppers here, baseball bats, the fucking lot, man. There's one time my mum watched while I took on four or five coppers. I was just dragging them around with me. Oh, look at it. It's more or less. It was a game for Jamie. With the police, yeah. So you get me chased around. <laughs> they obviously enjoy chasing around. He obviously enjoy, enjoyed being chased. <laughs> really didn't give a fuck what anyone thought, really. But the courts did give a fig. Jamie has added it all up. He's done 18 years behind bars. That's all I know is street. I'm criminal-minded, I'm street-educated, and I've been to the biggest university in life. Wow. Prison. University of life. You learn everything and anything. Jamie may well have learned his lesson, but he's been replaced by a new breed of car criminal, using the very latest gadgets to help themselves to whatever you've left in your car. Și cred că sunt unul dintre cei mai buni hoți. On the roads of Britain, there's a new form of car crime that any driver can be a victim of. 
and Mickey has the secret in his hand. It looks like a car key, but it's actually anything but. This is what normally happens when you lock your car. Clunk, flash, sorted. But Mickey's device blocks the signal from your fob. So you walk away thinking your car's locked when it's not. In the moment, I the machine and look at the value. Mickey's a 31-year-old Romanian who's thieved right across Europe before bringing his dubious talents to Liverpool. I was in Germany, I was there, I was there in Greece, in France, but here in Anglia, it's a country that makes money more easily. This car is a setup, so nothing was stolen. If you find two or three telephones, you have to take immediately the vase of the lire. It's even more easy to put it here. I can do six or seven of the lire. And with all the money he's making, Mickey's building a villa back home in Romania. Fagul costra de patru ani de zile. Dacă nu eram bun, să nu mă pricepeam. Până acum am luat poliția. Și cred că sunt unul dintre cei mai buni coți. Back in Swindon, there's a man who also thought he was the cat's whiskers. Good shot. It's dog eat dog. Kill or be killed. Jamie Manderson was once described as Britain's most convicted car criminal. Yeah, I'll do it. But now he's 40, yeah. and his only criminal excitement comes via a joystick. OK, what's going on? There's no one left to kill. Oh, that's a Brucey bonus. This is my home, and it's my little prison. The only time I go out nowadays is every couple of weeks to go shopping. I don't feel a need to go out and mingle with people because it's just one big, vicious circle. But when those trips to town do come around, life in the fast lane is now life in the bus lane. You go out, you mix with people, you end up getting in trouble. You're back, back inside before you know it. And with me, I mean, it ain't a case of, oh, be careful, or you might get in trouble. It's a case of, if I go out and mingle, I'm going to prison tomorrow. As simple as that. And it's not long before Jamie's prediction comes true. Who's that? Oh, fucking hell. You all right there? Don't get me involved. <laughs> me. We'll get out of the camera. Ah. Jay, listen to me, please. You're meant to be a fucking mate. Yeah, I'm and I'm trying, trying to be. Help you out here. If you don't oh, want to be on there, stay out of view. Listen, don't get in a conflict with me, mate. Or what? What's your... Or what? Listen, let me get or my what? top off so I can fucking see and I'll your show top. you. Or what? What? Come on then. Come on then. Fucking what? Come on then. Go on, Jay. Go on. Throw one big boy. Come here, little. Throw one big boy. Oi, oi. Listen, next time I see you, walk away. You're pissed, you're fucking stupid. You're fucking dick. I'm fine, mate. Cheers, flat. Fucking dickhead. Now you see why I stay at home. Cheers, bro. Life's now very different for Jamie. He's living on benefits, and an injury from a car smash when he was 15 is back to haunt him. I've had operations um, and whatnot on me knee. And now I've got a, a painful limp, which I really didn't need. And it's been downhill since then. Treated myself. I fucking need one. It's been one of them days. So nice. But while Jamie's life is in neutral, Mr. Big's operation is in cruise control. And the next link in the criminal chain is disguising the stolen high-end car so it can be smuggled out of the country. 
and that's where the tech whiz kid comes in again. Having eliminated the trackers, Terry turns to more artistic skills. When you get a vehicle and you want to move it abroad, you need some kind of documentation. So you make a logbook. Now this was an actual logbook. Using various um, image manipulation programs, I've blanked this document basically to make a template that can be used again. You see, um, for instance, a registration number, it's gone. However, the back in, there are some security marks at the back, that's still there. See, this is the registered keeper, and as you can see, there is no registered keeper, that's blank. Now, it looks like this is like blue, and this none of these colours are what they are because they're made of very small dots. They're all different shades of blue. So, like, they couldn't just blank that with blue. You've got to be able to produce the little tiny dots. It's got to look right. Terry says he's forged at least 50 fake logbooks, and he reckons he's not the only one because in Eastern Europe, where the stolen cars go, forgeries are commonplace. I think in the places where these go, um, I probably think if you pre presented a genuine one, they'd look at it a bit suspicious because I bet they see more of these than they see genuine ones. Back at the port of Felix, though, cloned cars with forged documents are nothing new to one of the crime-fighting teams trying to stop stolen vehicles being smuggled out of the UK. They've currently seized three cloned vehicles, and two of them are identical twins. Um, these are all Dutch, stolen Dutch ones. These have been cloned. In other words, the identity of a similar vehicle has been placed upon it. So it becomes like a, a forged passport, really. If you look at that, the chassis number is the same in each car. They had the same registration plates. They had the same modifications and alterations done to them. Um, so we knew that neither was right. They'll go to any lengths to steal the vehicles and they'll go to any lengths to hide the actual identification as well. Um, these, are, these are skilled gangs. The volume of vehicles involved far exceeds what we obviously catch uh, and recover. So they won't be too um, concerned that they've lost one or two vehicles. And Mr. Big certainly isn't losing any sleep. <laughs> nah, I've never lost a car. Car's never been lost. It's a bit big to lose. <laughs> the police are very good at investigating. If there's a mistake made or something happens, it's extremely risky. Well, the risks are could at any time. You can get caught, then it's a hell of a jail sentence, but uh, the end of it, we're fortunate enough that they've never managed to catch us. Just know that you've got to stick to the certain way and provide you stick to it, then it's pretty foolproof, really. While the gangs and the crime fighters battle it out, there's a different challenge for one of Britain's most notorious car criminals. Jamie is about to get behind the wheel for the first time in eight years. It's been a while. It's been a good while. I probably will be nervous seeing a cop car, whether it's coming for me or not. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie may have stolen hundreds of cars and illegally driven thousands of miles, but he's never had a license. So as he's now going straight, we gave him a lesson to see if he can drive in a way that does obey the highway code. Hello, Jamie. Afternoon. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> My name's Julie. I'm going to be your instructor for today. I used to be Britain's most banned driver. Did you really? Yes. Oh, right. Um, OK. Good luck. So how... <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like, like to get in... Um, I've got the keys for a minute, so... Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah? Normally I wouldn't need keys. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, it's windy out there. Mm. <laughs> so used to having me foot on that pedal. Right, OK, Jamie. What we'll do is... Let's see how you drive, first of all. Let's not try and fix something that's not broken, OK? OK. 
Did you check your mirrors there? I didn't. I so didn't. It's ten mile oh, an hour. Sorry, I'm... Yeah, it's okay. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Let's drive up there. If you go steady through the rough bit, make it quite steady. Not in an off-road Am I vehicle. going too fast? I'll tell you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, somebody's got their clutch down there, haven't they? We'll do a few more and then we'll go the other way. Right. Okay. Lovely steering, that's much better. Right, okay. Just pull up on the left here a minute by this cone a minute. Right, okay. Right. There is a few things we need to work on, definitely, for a start, okay? Yeah. How many pedals have we got? Three. How many have you been using? Two. So, you know, you said you said, oh, are we going a bit fast? Yeah. I mean, is Did you feel. I mean, it felt really natural to me. Right. It, and I did feel in total control. Yeah. You know, you said that you've always had the police chasing you. Yeah. So, you've always been thinking about who's behind you, not who's in front yeah, of you. Yeah, it was um, definitely something I had to do. Do you, do you see how much risk you put everybody at? Obviously, as well as yourself. Oh, yeah. Don't steal cars, man. Ain't worth it. All Again, the best, thank then. you. Yeah, thank all you the very best. Much. All right, then. Thank you. Bye. The lesson's gone well. Jamie's even considering looking for a job as a delivery driver. Mr. Big's operation is also moving forward. Once a stolen luxury car has been cloned and the documents forged, it's time for Dick, the driver, to get into the hot seat and head for Europe. So I get the phone call, get told to where to meet. Phone call mainly because uh, text messages are all readable and traceable. And um, have a look at it on the map, because you don't want to put it in the sat-nav either, because that's traceable, yeah. And just get to where it, it needs to go get it to nearest port. It's just a case of, you know, keep your chin up, keep looking straight, and um, you have to stick to the story. You have to believe in what you're saying and believe in what you're doing. As long as you keep calm and you don't shiver and you don't sweat, money's in the bank, really. You know, you, you won't get away with it forever, but I'll get away with it for as long as I can. Dick drives the car to the most crucial stage of the operation, handing it over to the foreign buyer and getting that all-important cash. That usually takes place in Bulgaria. And for Mr Big, this is where it can all go wrong. Sometimes you don't always get what you want when you get to the other end, but uh, that's what you're aiming for. Whether you get it or you don't get it, that's a different matter. You can hardly sort of take him to court, can you? <laughs> This is the Black Sea coast of Bulgaria. One of the main destinations for the British motors stolen by Mr Big's international car crime operation. This is home to many of the buyers prepared to pay good money for hot UK cars. If there's a market, you tend to fill it. Altogether, we've brought about 100 vehicles to Bulgaria. Cars end up all over Eastern Europe, but I believe the vast majority go to go to Romania. We have somebody who orders, takes the vehicles, after that, not really concerned. Mr Big reckons in total his team's nicked and sold abroad at least a thousand UK cars. For most of the cars, uh, we get about half the actual price you pay in the um, UK. Today, none of the buyers of top-of-the-range motors wanted to show their faces. But Mr Big's operation also pinches cheaper models, like this one. They sell like hotcakes too. And many buyers are on their way to Britain with crime on their minds. If you've got a Romanian or a Bulgarian uh, criminal who wanted to utilise this car, 
they would have no difficulty in taking it over to the UK, getting it into the UK on the Bulgarian Romanian plates, and then they've got basic anonymity while they're running around in the vehicle. Mr. Big may well organise crime back home, but he's really not happy when Eastern Europeans do exactly the same thing. It does cheese me off, to be fair, but uh, <laughs> can't do a great deal about it, you know. When you're offering somebody something that's not particularly that legitimate, you can't, you can't be too choosy, really. I do feel a bit aggrieved that they're probably going back to use them for a crime and dishonest things, but it isn't my concern. If they do things bad, they should get caught. <laughs> Jamie Manderson's story has also reached a final destination. The man once called Britain's most convicted car criminal has been reunited with Kane. What a... The son he lost contact with when he was in jail. And that's enough to ensure he'll never nick another motor. Oh, dear. I mean, the day he was born, I was in a couple of police chases on the very day he was born because I was trying to get to the hospital to see him. I've done clumsy things in the past, but nothing stupid. One thing that I promised him and my mum and all the family, I, I wouldn't go that way. He hasn't got the frame of mind that I had. Yeah. I, I've had balls of steel. I'm not saying he hasn't got balls of steel, but I'm, I'm saying that there's no way I could see him in the situations that I've been in and pull it off. It's something you just put at the back of your head and think, wow, he's done this. He's been stupid, but, you know, I've pulled him round and it's... <coughs> he's been fine ever since. That's all you ever need, support, and it gets you through a lot. I've said to him so many times, I feel so ashamed and so embarrassed. And he's always said, why? I'm proud of you, you know, and he loves me. And that's what kicks the shit out of me. That's why I'm not going back to prison. Mm. I couldn't afford to lose him, I couldn't. No. I mean, he's never put me in a position where he said, look, if you do it again, that's it. You know, it's not like that. Honestly, looking back, some of the things you do, no one's ever gonna do in their life. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, it was fun. But while Jamie's crimes are at an end, the lawmen at Felixstowe are still battling to stop stolen UK motors being taken abroad. And it goes far beyond Mr Big's operation, with major organised crime rackets now using cars as currency. Yeah, the vehicle will be used as, as, uh, as the commodity in so many areas, and it, it, it is money, it's money on the move. I think people don't realise that the vehicle is the cash. It's like having a, a wad of cash in your hand. It's used for everything, it's stolen for all sorts of means, and it's an easy method of payment. We believe there's hundreds of gangs which are involved. Yeah, they certainly know that we're looking at them. But we have to, in many ways, play catch-up with them. So they're quite often ahead of the game. As he chills out in Bulgaria, Mr Big thinks he is ahead of the game. The stolen Jag will soon be on the way to Russia, his foot soldiers are lining up the next British motor to steal, and the boss is enjoying the spoils, home and abroad. Standard of living, if you've got money, is excellent because the rates of uh, exchange out here are, are good, and so money goes a uh, hell of a lot further. You can party all night and do what you want, you know. If you want three girls, you can have three girls, you know what I mean? If you, whatever you want, you can fulfill fantasies on a budget. That looks like Dow Boy with that thing coming around here. <laughs> what is it, creme de coconut shandy lime? Mr Big plans to retire in luxury, but before that happens, there are still a few more high-end British cars to steal. I certainly get a buzz out of it, yeah out of thinking that it's happened and it's been successful and also beating things that are supposed to be unbeatable, you know. And when it happens, it makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, it does give me a buzz, so I wouldn't do it otherwise. 